In this video, I am going to show you really quickly how web proxies and VPNs differ. I'm not just going to tell you about it, I'm actually going to show you it. We're going to have a couple up side by side, look at some different proxies alongside a very specific VPN. And hopefully that will better illustrate kind of just how they, how they work. Because they each have their uses, uh, neither is perfect. But I think the conclusion from yourself, hopefully by the end of the video, might be the VPNs just slightly edge out proxies. So to begin the setup process, super straightforward. If we go to, let's use the hide me proxy, which is a proxy actually made by a VPN. But if we go to its website, the whole thing is run through the browser. You've got a few options on the side there. There's a menu to choose a server. You only get a choice of three. We pick the Netherlands. There's then some additional options that there are advanced options. Some proxies will offer you this, some won't. They vary from things like allowing cookies, as you can see here, uh, encrypted URL. Of course, you kind of always want to leave that checked, presumably otherwise, you know, why use a proxy at all? The option to encrypt the page, to remove scripts, and to remove objects. For the sake of this video, I'm actually going to leave those untouched. We're going to leave allow cookies on, and we're going to leave encrypt URL on, of course. Why are we leaving allow cookies on? Well, because quite simply, sometimes when you check to turn it off, it breaks the web page. Proxies can be quite unstable, as we might see a little bit later on in this video. And to go for a website, why not top10vpn.com? Type it in there, load up the page, and as you can see, everything looks exactly like it would do normally, as if you were browsing the web without the proxy. We can click through to a roundup there, see everything, although I do notice now that we're on it. While the page is loaded correctly, we actually don't have the top navbar there, so you can't easily uh, browse around the website like you normally would, so kind of unconventional error and come along a little bit quicker than I thought perhaps when I said earlier that sometimes things don't always quite go right with proxies, but other than that, a relatively smooth browsing experience. So how about with a VPN? How do we set up a VPN? Well, not to get too into it, but the one thing that I would make sure that you always check when you fire up a VPN for the first time, and maybe every time, perhaps if it updates or if you do a reinstall, is if we open the settings menu here from the top left-hand corner on ExpressVPN, and under this general tab, you can see a little section called Network Lock. Network Lock is ExpressVPN's name, essentially, for the kill switch, which you might have heard of before. We've talked about it a lot. Super, super important. Uh, the top option there, stop all internet traffic if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly, always 100% make sure you have that turned on when you're using your VPN because if you don't have that toggled on and the connection drops for whatever reason you could be left exposing your IP address and your traffic. The second option is optional uh, as the name would suggest but that's one that I have left toggled on because when I'm working in an office I need to have access to things like as it says there I mean it's actually nailed it perfectly there printers and file servers those are the two things that I do need constant access to so by leaving that box checked you can still keep your device on your local network. As far as I know, there's no real downside to doing this. Um, the only option, the only reason why you might want to have it um, toggled off is if you want it to be invisible on your network as well, but I have no problem with that in my office, so I'm leaving that checked on if you're wondering why. And then after that, all that's left to do is to connect to a server. The default one that's thrown up here is in the United States. I'm perfectly happy with that. You just go and click that big power button. It takes all of a second and you're up and running. You can if you want, you can click three dotted lines there to take a look at the server list. Uh, every VPN will look a little bit different to this, but they're all kind of, they follow the same sort of rules. Uh, lots of services to choose from with ExpressVPN, so pick whichever one you want, whichever one suits your needs. And then if we go to top10vpn.com in the browser, it loads up properly. And by properly, I mean properly, because this time we have the top nav that I can click on and browse around the website. No interference, no kind of weird technical hiccups, which is one of many reasons why I think VPNs tend to be a lot less hassle than proxies because everything looks exactly as it should. It works first time and it works quickly as well. Now let's take a look at how a proxy versus a VPN differs when it comes to doing that most basic of web functions, which is accessing Google, using a search engine and just trying to browse the web as you normally would. We're using one called Forever Proxy here, a very popular one, very trustworthy and reliable proxy. We're just going to put google.com into the URL bar there going to select a web server in the United States, New York, why not? And then for select IP location, also choosing New York just to match it. Going to leave all of the options at the bottom alone for the same reasons I mentioned before. Don't want to give it any opportunity to go wrong. We click go and it loads very, very quickly. But as I'm sure you've noticed, 
the Google Doodle, the Google logo in the center of the page there hasn't loaded. Apparently we're celebrating Hank Adams, but can't see what he looks like, can't see what any of it looks like because it hasn't loaded properly. The web page will still function, but that's kind of just one of the hiccups that can happen when you are using a proxy. Things break on page, things don't load properly. You can see uh, the URL is obfuscated. It doesn't look like you're visiting google.com to anyone who's spying on you, which is the big benefit of using a web proxy like this, but you get the downside to the convenience, which is that sometimes things might just not work properly. On a page like Google's homepage, you probably don't mind all that much, but um, if you were doing it on a page where that kind of stuff matters more, maybe you actually wanted to see an image on that page, that's specifically what you're Googling for, that's not great. Now compare that to if we use the VPN, we just connect ExpressVPN back up to the New York server. And then we go open up a new tab, we'll go to Google again. And looking at the home page there, that's the image that we're used to seeing. Along with the links at the top as well, which I think weren't showing there originally. So just as I said, it really is a, sm a much more seamless internet browsing experience. Ideally, you shouldn't notice anything different to what you would normally see when browsing the web. With the exception of maybe, of course, if you aren't actually in the USA or New York, you're going to be seeing search results, uh, websites, ads, things like that, that are more relevant to people who are in New York, because that's where I think you are, because that's your IP address now. Now let's try something a bit more complex, which is going to YouTube, a much more uh, heavy, a much more complex website than just the Google homepage. So again, starting off by using Forever Proxy, we tap in youtube.com into the URL search bar, and then we'll just go using the default service because it doesn't really matter. And here's what we're faced with, Invidious. Now, I know what you're thinking, this isn't uh, like phishing, this isn't a scam. Invidious is actually a uh, an open source bespoke front end created by a real user for YouTube, uh, specifically for cases kind of like this where maybe you don't want to have the the full Google suite uh, like tracking you, blasting you in the face. But you can still search it and use it just like regular YouTube, and you can see regular videos when we search for us there. The video loads up, it kind of looks a little bit low rent, a little bit run down, you lose all of the custom formatting and all the things like that that YouTube offers on its true website, but there, there I am, look at that guy in that video there. Um, you don't get the options for, for quality either as you can see, it's, um, it's an interesting experience. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with using it, but ultimately you have to be willing to, and if you're using a proxy and you want to go to YouTube, and it doesn't take you to YouTube, it can't take you to YouTube, well, there you go. You kind of, you, you get what you pay for in a sense. There's, uh, once again, there's, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's not a virus, there's no danger. It's just a different way of accessing YouTube. And it perhaps might not be one that you want if you're using a, a proxy. Now we're gonna use the hide me proxy to see what it looks like through a different one. Uh, let's change the location to Germany this time. Uh, we'll leave the options alone and we'll type in YouTube. Now, here's one of the other alternatives. If you thought it was bad before loading up the uh, the alternative to YouTube, how about one that just doesn't load at all? You can see that the tiles are kind of there, like it wants to, to give you something and it knows what YouTube looks like. You might have seen this before, perhaps when your browser's loading, but for no more than like a split second. Now, there's nothing. We, we can click around and nothing happens. It's just, uh, it's broken. It's broken and there's nothing you can do about that. We can try playing around with the settings, but it's going to be futile. YouTube uh, won't load properly through the HiveMe proxy. So now let's compare it to with the VPN. We pick a VPN server. We can go to the, the recommended list there. Anyone will do. Doesn't matter. Let's choose uh, France in this example. Reload YouTube. Uh, it's loading a homepage there. I have the history turned off just so we don't get flooded with nonsense suggestions. But there it is. Nice and easy, couldn't have asked for it any quicker or better than that. That's just the YouTube homepage that you're used to and it's loaded properly. And also what's more, if we click through to some of the videos, you'll see that the recommendations are French because we are connected to a server in France. So that's where YouTube thinks we are. You can even see it says uh, YouTube FR in the corner there. Everything working fine, videos you know, loading without lag, nice and quick. And you'll be able to stream in the same quality you normally would if you didn't have a VPN connected. The next test and a big point of comparison between proxies and VPNs is going to be ad blocking. Here we have a GitHub tool loaded up, which is 
one that I really love. I think it's fantastic, super comprehensive, and we actually use it when testing ad blockers formally on Top 10 VPN. If you ever see a page where we mention ad blockers or a page that compares them between VPNs, this is the tool that we've used to compare the results between VPNs. But what we're going to do this time is we're going to do it with proxies first. Now as I scroll down the list here, you can see these are all of the many, many, many different types of ad and tracker that this website, this tool tests for. There are a lot of them, and it takes a really, really good ad blocker to block every single one. Uh, when I tried it earlier with uBlock Origin, which is the Chrome, or in this case, Opera extension that I like to use, and I recommend you use too, uh, it blocked, I believe, 99% of them. So that's really, really very good, obviously. The number sounds good. The 1% the slips through the net, I guess that can happen, but that is what happens when you use a dedicated ad blocker. It's very impressive. Now with ExpressVPN, connect, and then we toggle on through the options, threat manager, and the ad blocker, and also parental controls, because why not? You never know, that might be something that the, the ad blocker tests for. So you can check as many of these on or off as you like. You can leave them off and use an ad blocker in combination with it, or you could get rid of your ad blocker and use ExpressVPNs just built in like that. But of course, that will only take effect as long as the VPN is connected. If your VPN is not connected, you don't get the benefits of that ad blocker. And when we run the test, you can see it blocks 59%, which isn't fantastic. It's not as good as a dedicated ad blocker. Most VPNs will also struggle to meet that threshold, but it does a decent job. It's gonna give you a better experience as you browse the internet. You can see, a lot of these boxes are still red, but it's actually there's green ticks next to them, so it's getting, you know, uh, just under uh, two thirds of them, which, which isn't terrible. It's not terrible, but it's not going to be as good as using a true ad blocker, most likely. So now let's copy the URL for that ad blocking test tool, and we're going to go back to Forever Proxy, and we're going to paste it in, and we're going to see how the, for the free Forever Web Proxy does when it comes to blocking ads. And the results are uh, bad, apparently, is what it says on the page. What it means by bad there, I believe, is quite simply it's got a bad response. The web page doesn't seem to be able to load properly. It doesn't seem to, be, seem to be able to test Forever Proxy's web blocking, which is, as we've said before, as we've seen before, one of those natural side effects that you get with using a free web proxy. We'll never know how good, truly, uh, scientifically, its ad blocking capabilities are, because the page can't even load. Something's broken there, which is disappointingly common with web proxies. Now let's try it with HideMe instead. Maybe we'll have better luck with that one. We'll try it with HideMe's web proxy. Pasting it in there, leaving all the options as they are, untouched, and clicking go. And it gets a 68%. Pretty healthy, not bad at all. Better than ExpressVPN, in fact, a, li a little bit over that. So that's just tipped over into the, the green rating there on the tool. It's, that's that's pretty admirable. That's honestly not bad at all. There aren't many built-in VPN ad blockers that'll do better than that. Once again, a true ad blocker will be superior to that. And if all you're doing is browsing in your web browser anyway using a proxy, you may as well just use something like uBlock Origin, and then you don't have to worry about the ad blocking capabilities of something like Hypey Proxy. But as we scroll down that list, a lot of green ticks there. Pretty pretty impressive and not bad at all, Hypey. Maybe something where a web proxy and a VPN can be matched, but not always. Hello, and sorry for interrupting me, but during the editing process of this, when I was going through the footage, uh, I ran it by a colleague of mine who knows a lot more about this issue than I do, and they actually pointed out that I'd missed something out, something that was very important, and it's something that may imply that you perhaps need to take the results of this proxy ad blocking test with maybe a little bit of a pinch of salt because of the way that proxies work when it comes to ad blocking. Now, rather than blocking it at a kind of a source level or an internet gateway level, they instead edit the actual code on the page a lot of the time and that can be used as a force for good. A lot of ads that you see on the page are just embedded in there within the code of the website so you can strip that away and you won't see any ads and that's great. But that also means that when you're giving that control to the proxy they can't just necessarily strip things away from it but they also have the potential ability to insert things and as far as I could tell that wasn't the case in the proxy we're using here. Everything seemed above board, everything seemed good and well and normal, but it does hypothetically mean that if a proxy were less trustworthy and less scrupulous, they could perhaps insert maybe even malicious code onto that page. It could be something quite bad. It could be essentially, you know, a, a virus, or it could be something that they used to track you rather than the, the ads and the trackers that you've just tried to get rid of. Or alternatively, they could perhaps do something a bit less insidious, but still kind of that doesn't feel great, which is maybe inserting things like affiliate links is something we've seen before. 
Uh, if you're unaware, a lot of the time when you buy products on websites like, say, Amazon through other websites that recommend it to you, you will have an affiliate link there and Amazon or the retailer will track that link and they'll send a proportion of that transaction as a payment back to the person that referred it, that referred that referred you, sorry, to them. So in this instance, that could hypothetically be, if they were so inclined, the proxy on every single website you go to. It's because you are giving them that control to tamper with the code on your page. You never really know what they might be doing. Uh, so again, one reason why a VPN could be perceived as superior in this circumstance and a reason why maybe those results, which I was initially a little bit surprised with watching the video, make a little bit more sense now, because it's very good, but you might not always be able to trust that. Anyway, back to it, me. And the final thing I want to show you here is how proxies deal with obfuscating files. Now, I've got two instances of our website loaded up here, top10vpn.com, the exact same page, the exact same image selected, and I've gone into inspect element inside my Opera browser here. The page is the same, the image is the same, and what you can see there, if you take a look, is how drastically the file names have changed. Now on the page they look the same, however if you want to try and load them up, you'll see that on the left there, the proxy window, it's a long string of gibberish. It of course begins with the forever proxy URL, but then it's a much, much longer string of random characters. And they are random, which is great, because it means that anyone spying on your connection can't see what the image you've been looking at is. But it's quite heavy, it's quite a lot of overhead. Your browser's gonna have to work harder to load that, and ultimately with many, many instances of that adding up, that could slow down the load time on the page. Alternatively, if we go over to the other window, this is one that I loaded up with the VPN connected, but not through the proxy, just with ExpressVPN running. You can see the file name is the same in both instances. So it's a lot shorter, nice and snippy. We like to try and keep light file weight on the website on Top 10 VPN because it makes the page loads quicker for you. But um, it's a very short, snappy file name and it is unchanged most importantly. Now you might be thinking, hold on, does that mean that people can see what you're looking at? Well, no, it doesn't because your entire connection is being protected by the VPN. ExpressVPN is covering absolutely everything so it doesn't need to obfuscate file names on an individual basis, you know, for multiple, multiple, multiple times on a page. You know, imagine you're going through a Google search results or something like that, something which just has like a huge mosaic of images. It's not going to have to work really, really hard to change all of them. It just keeps them as is. And case in point, let's say we want to go and time how long it takes for the page to load. If we refresh forever proxy, you see it, it, it pops up, but it's loading, loading, loading. It takes quite a long while to fully complete that. Whereas if we connect ExpressVPN and refresh the page, it's near instant, it takes no time at all. Again, partly down to the fact that we've built a pretty good website, I like to think, nice and lightweight, but that'll be true to, to any page that you're on. The, the VPN's always gonna be quicker than the proxy when it comes to loading it, and as we've seen, a lot more reliable too. I hope that's been useful. That's by no means a comprehensive overview of what the two technologies are like and how they are similar and how they differ, but I thought it was quite good to get a little hands-on experiment there with no no rehearsal that was just off the cuff that was genuinely real footage all recorded by myself with the all, the all the glitches and warts and all so that you can see how it really works when you go to use either of the two technologies in your browser in real life you should be able to expect an experience similar to that if you want more information take a look at our dedicated page for proxies versus vpns perhaps you're on it right now and that's what you've seen the video if not i'll put a link to it in the description below so you can get there from youtube and there's lots to learn but don't be overwhelmed and make sure that either way you're staying safe online it seems like you've got a pretty good grasp of the, the subject if you're coming here to compare the two so as long as you're using one or the other you should be fine but i think a vpn probably based on what we've seen might suit your needs better thanks i'll see you next time